Tired of restless nights? At Lisa, we know good sleep is essential for mental, physical, and emotional health. From memory foam mattresses to hybrids that keep you cool all night long, Lisa's mattresses offer exceptional comfort and support with free delivery and 100 nights to try out your mattress in the comfort of your home. For a limited time, save up to $700 off select mattresses plus two free pillows. Go to lisa.com slash iHeart for an additional $50 off mattresses and select goods. Exclusions apply. See lisa.com for more details. Cocoa Beach, not only Orlando's closest beach, but Florida's spaciest. Put your feet in the sand and pull up your front row seats to America's missions to space. Watch rocket launches right from the beach. The legacy of the space race surrounds you on Cocoa Beach. Head to Kennedy Space Center to learn the history and future of space exploration. Cocoa Beach is perfect for space enthusiasts, young and old alike. Plan your own mission online at LegendaryCocoBeach.com on Florida's Space Coast. It's time for a Big Blue Kickoff Live. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it because you did. On Giants.com. You know what I saw? New York Giant Prime. And the Giants mobile app. 17-14 is the final. One touchdown, we are world champions. Believe it, and it will happen. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Welcome to Big Blue Kickoff Live right here on Giants.com and the Giants mobile app. Big Blue Kickoff Live is is presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football Giants. John Schmelk, Paul Dottino with you, taking your calls. 201-939-4513. 201-939-4513. I will push the elephant in the room aside just at the beginning here because I think it probably makes sense to do so, Paul. Uh, At this point. Standing pattern uh, where we are where we are yesterday in terms of the defensive coordinator stuff. Uh, we've seen the reports. The Giants don't have a statement um, on what's going on here. I think based on if you're reading all the different beat reporter accounts of what's going on, you can figure out why. Um, I know you want to call up. You want to ask about the D.C.? That's fine. You can state your opinion. That's fine. We'll happily take your call, uh, but we're not going to be able to comment on the process of what's happening right now. Again, this is the downside of you work for the team. This is how it goes sometimes. You don't want to get ahead of stories. Um, when you don't know everything that exactly is happening. So, again, you're free to call, give your opinion. We could talk about what's next, that sort of thing. That's fine. But in terms of the current situation, the Giants have no comment because there's no comment to be made in terms of what's going on. And, again, you can figure out why based on um, some of the reports that all of us have read that are um, out there. So, again, 201-939-4513, 201-939-4513. All right, Paul. Um A lot of stuff going around the league here. Some moves still being made. Uh, And I think the big one and the surprise for me that that happened yesterday was the uh, Mike Vrabel deal. Uh, Yes. I think we all know he's a really good coach. I've been trying to listen to to various national people to figure out what went on there. Uh, Based on kind of the the, the little nuggets that are out there, I know the owner uh, for the Titans did an interview uh, that kind of explained some of what went on. Uh, But I, I think... It seemed like it might have struck a little bit of a chord that he went and sat in Bob Kraft's suite during their bye week for the Patriots Hall of Fame thing, which seems weird. He's a former Patriot. It's a Hall of Fame thing. Yeah. But uh, there doesn't seem to be – him and Rank Carthon apparently got along. There doesn't seem to be anything there with those two guys being in conflict. And, you know, sometimes things just run their course too, right? Like a guy is in a place for a long time and you want something new. Maybe that's part of it too. But to me – if I'm out there and I'm a general manager or I'm an owner looking to hire a head coach, Mike Vrabel is 1A on my list. He's ahead of Jim Harbaugh. He would even be ahead of Belichick for me if he ends up prying loose from New England. That's just how highly I think of Mike Vrabel. I mean, he just knocked the Jaguars out of the playoffs in the last week of the year when his team's playing for nothing. The Jaguars are playing for a division title. So I think Mike Vrabel is an excellent head coach. And I was surprised. Um, I know there was some noise about it, so maybe surprise is the wrong word, but I think it's just striking that a a coach of that caliber is out there on the market. In this world of what have you done for me lately, and and I I was just looking up his record because when you were saying like he's been there a long time, that's all relevant. In today's world, yes, six years is a long time. No, it yeah. is. It's, you know, six years is a long time. It used to be not the case, but nowadays, six years is a long time. And he had four consecutive winning seasons to start his tenure in Tennessee, and then seven and ten, and six and eleven. Now, you know, if you ask me, I'm with John on this. 
I think the guy is just a really good football man. He's a good people guy, has a terrific reputation about being smart and being respectful, being a real pro, uh, knows how to deal with the media. You know, he's very affable. I Look, I, I don't know that there's anything negative that I could come up with from afar. Now, I've never met Mike Vrabel. I'm not sure affable is a word I'd use to describe Mike Vrabel, but okay. <laughs> no, he's, <laughs> he's fine, but I don't know if he's affable. He's got a good, he's got a good personality about him. Right, I've seen fine. interviews. Yes. Um, from afar, you know, without being there every day, I don't know that I could come up with any negatives. So I agree with you. I think if, if I were a team looking for a head coach, he'd be somebody I would really want to talk to. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so I think that's just kind of one of those deals here as you move forward um, that you'll have to kind of keep an eye on. Again, 201-939-4513. 201-939-4513. Um, a lot going on here. Again, it's all presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football giants. A lot of fans on the line want to get in. And by the way, over the next couple of weeks, without a lot going on, uh, we'll start going through some of our postseason or preseason predictions from last year. A lot of the over-unders we did, we did our, um, Paul and I did our um, standings little contest we did before the year, so we can go through all of those as we move forward. In fact, maybe we'll do that a little bit today, depending on on how these calls go. All right, let's go to Rich in Florida. He'll lead us off today on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Hi, Rich. Hey, uh, John and Godfather. Happy New Year to you. How are you guys doing? You too. Hi. Well, terrific. I just wanted to shout out to Team BBKL and all. All the, the regular callers, you know, I've been a diehard since 1961. I've seen every game. Of course, everyone was disappointed in this year's season, but um, you guys and the callers just just keep us juiced. You know, was, you've been watching the Giants as long as I have. There's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs. But the one commonality that we diehards have is um, is the fellowship. You know, we, we bond together. And, and your regular callers that uh, they call in regularly, I guess I'm, I can be considered one of them. You know, I might disagree with some of those guys, and we all have different personalities. But the one thing that's common among all of us is the is the passion for the Giants. You know, it, look at us. You know, we're in the off season now. We're we're ready. I know Paul's ready for September already. And that's just <laughs> the way we are. But but the, my my teaching point to you guys is you help cultivate that with this show and every one of the, the um, talent that's on the team and, and Pearson and Dom, your producers, et cetera, and John. I mean, I, we really appreciate that. I mean, it's just this very – Giant fans are very special to me. I have two absolutely guys that are a band of brothers, and we're, you know, we're just bonded at a hip, and that's all because of the Giants. And you're, you're part of that. So kudos, keep up the good work. And I uh, just wanted to say that, and I, I'm pretty sure I speak for – people in your audience too and you need to know that thank you for your kind words. I appreciate we really it. appreciate that no doubt uh, the other, other thing i wanted to find out is uh, a long lost guy that we just haven't heard of that came in highly touted and got hurt you know typical giants got got hurt was aaron robinson what's do you have awareness of what's going on with that kid he worked out with the trainers all season long and was never able to get the green light to be activated for practice uh, remember now, when he got hurt, we're talking about major, major knee surgery. He had a bunch of things go wrong when, when he injured that knee. It wasn't just like a simple, and I hate to even say this, John, but in modern medicine, simple ACL is a simple ACL now, right? Correct. I mean, that's the way it's mm-hmm. become. Doctors have done such a great job of being able to, to take care of something like that. It's now routine. Aaron Robinson did not have a routine knee injury. It was a significant one that had multiple things go wrong, much like Saquon Barkley had like three different things go wrong when he got hurt in Chicago a few years ago. It was a major, major deal. Uh, The good news is he was around the team all season and was doing work with the trainers and was doing everything he could to get back. And as far as I know, you know, he still intends on trying to, to make it back to the field. So we're just going to have to see how that rehab continues and at what point in time uh, the trainers will allow him to get back out there and practice. But that has not come yet. Yeah, And, and it's a shame because he's got talent. And that's something you can't count on at this point. You he's can't. one of those guys, all right, if he works out, bonus. But it's something you can't really you know, put in the bank and say, all right, 
this is what we're counting on. No, you know, no, you can't. There's just no way to do that, and it's too bad because I really believe he's got a lot of talent. He's got a he's got a real real strong skill set, and I I think they could have used him. Yeah, it's a shame. I didn't realize he had multiple tears besides the ACL because, if I recall, I mean, he only played it a year, correct? And he got hurt in the first yep. game. I think it was 21. Yeah, and, he, uh, he's missed now a whole season, you know, and it, it, season plus, quite frankly. Yeah. So it's a shame. That's tough. That's tough. Well, best of luck to him. And I definitely, uh, I hope his rehab, you know, just like with Daniel and everybody else, you know, we're usually the mass unit of the NFL. Everybody heals up, and God willing, they'll be back, back for us anyway. Will you guys keep up the good work. We appreciate it. No, thank you, Rich. Very kind words. We appreciate. It. Remember, guys, and I, we probably don't say this enough, but we wouldn't be doing all this programming, all these shows, if you guys weren't watching or listening to them. So, yep, there's demand. We appreciate everybody doing it, and and we thank you for being with us and. Uh, we hope we keep things entertaining and keep things interesting for you as we head throughout the uh, off season here on Big Blue Kickoff Live. 201-939-4513. 201-939-4513. Let's go next to Tim in Charleston. He's up next. Hi, Tim. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good to What's talk to you. What's going on? Morning. I'm actually sitting on my couch talking to you. I'm not at a bar. I'm not smoking <laughs> a cigar. So this is kind of a rare, rare kind of conversation. But anyhow, um, I want to – Joe from – I think it was Joe from Florida. Ditto to everything he said. I, I was only born in 61, so I've only been a, a real – started watching football in about 70. So I'm, I'm not quite as uh, uh, well-tenured a fan as him, but I appreciate it. And a um, couple of things. One thing I want to mention is that at some point in the offseason, I'll get to it, uh, it doesn't matter when we got a lot of time, obviously, is I want to talk about, I don't know if Paul was there, but um, we had the heavy hitters dinner back in two, January of 2005. And I was there for the cocktail party and then the, the dinner and everything. And so I, I've got a great story to share about that, but I'm not going to do it today because the season just ended. There's too much other thing, too many other things to talk about. So, Aside from the obvious, um, you know, question that we can address about the D.C. No, again, um, no, again, Tim, what's your question? And, and we will do our best to, to give whatever answer we can. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to address the D.C. situation. It is what it is. But we have obviously other situations. Okay. Um, we've got we several coordinator roles to fill. We've got uh, McGahee leaving, and he was, a, as, as you all have said, a great man and a great coach. But... But, you know, maybe it was time to move on. Um, and I've seen, I've, I've read a, a New York Post article today about possible, you know, candidates for that position. And I, so I kind of wanted to get your opinion on that. Rizzi came up, and, uh, among others. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, I mean, O-line coach, certainly a, a super important role <laughs> given how our old line is gone and we, we need to make some improvements there. Um, and then as to free agency in the draft, I'll just reiterate, you know, sign a guard, draft a tackle to be uh, either uh, Evan Neal's replacement or one of them to become a swing or move to guard or whatever it is. And, um, and, and, we, and, and we, and then, you know, we've, We've got, what, four picks in the top 50 or three in the top 50, I guess? It's five in so, the first 107. That's right. that's kind of so, how I've been trying to gauge it. And well, uh, so, three in the top 50. But that's fine. Premium picks. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not someone who is like, well, at this position, you got to take this. At that spot, you got to take this position. You know, you, you take best player. So, um but I, I think we have opportunities to fill a few of the holes. Um, but I think there are going to be some people gone in free agency. I don't think Xavier McKinney's coming back. I don't think we're paying him fifteen, seventeen, eighteen million dollars a year. Well, and, and by the way, just so people can use us as a basis, digging around a little bit, I think around seven, somewhere between fifteen and twenty million dollars of cap space, depending on where the cap number lands, is is going to be more or less where the team's going to be at. Is that all? Really? Oh, I thought it was more like 35. Okay. 
Well, but the, but then there are cuts, that would be right? a big like, number. No, but Tim, remember you got to deal with things like guys that had incentives on their contract. That's going to lop stuff off. Mm-hmm. You mentioned all the draft picks. You have to pay your draft class. That's going to lop off money from that. So all yeah. that has to get all of that has to get taken into consideration when uh, with so, the number. So it's it's not all that much, but obviously there are some cuts that may be made. Yeah. that will might increase that like Brent Bredesen I've heard you know you know 5.3 or 7.3 or whatever no, no. it is Bredesen's a free you agent know. Glowinski you're thinking about yeah Glow- oh, Glowinski he's oh, got one okay, year left bad. Bredesen's a free agent yeah. yeah but so anyhow you know I just I hope we can find a way to set, sign Saquon back because uh, I just feel like he's part of the soul of this organization with his desire to be a giant for life is is commendable and i hope we can find a way to bring him back we had an acceptable number uh for him and the team um and uh other than that you know i just i'm just interested in your thoughts about the uh o-line coach and the uh, uh special teams coordinator if you have any thoughts on that i'll take it off the air Look, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I'm like a special team coordinator expert and just going to throw names at you, the same names that everybody else has seen on these lists. You know, I haven't gone back and studied, you know, a bunch of special teams from guys that are available. So I'm not just going to throw names at you and in an un- uneducated way um, because I-, I don't think there's there's much to that. But look, to me, the special teams coach these days is not even about the kicking game, right? Because these kickers, in a lot of ways, coach themselves. I was talking to Shona Harris about this in the Giants Little Podcast, and he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, these guys are like golfers. Like, you don't mess with their – you don't, like, revamp guys' kicks and their swings. You know what I mean? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, it does so not. So you're working about guys that are going to be able to address the team, keep guys disciplined, have guys that come up off the practice squad or you're signing off the street, have them ready quickly as a special teams player, um, teach gunners, you know, kickoff – isn't even that important now. And, you know, we might have a brand-new kickoff system next year, too, if the rules committee decides to adopt that XFL kickoff deal. Don't know. So guys might be learning stuff on the fly, right? So uh, I, I think it's tough to kind of put those things into uh, on the pot and, and, and for me or, frankly, anyone else in the media to, to, to give you names other than guys of, of names that they recognize uh, because there are connections or something like that in terms of being a popularity contest like Larry Izzo, for example. Used to be in New England, Brian Dable connection. He was here, Giants connection. That's an end that makes sense for everybody, right? But I can't tell you whether or not he'd be a great lead special teams coach. I just don't know. The only guy who comes to mind who has a connection here who um, who is still doing it but is not tied up with an NFL team is Joe DiCamillis. Joe is right now the special teams uh, coach with the University of Texas. He was out of the National Football League this past season. He was with Dallas previous to that. He's been with a number mm-hmm. of teams. Raiders, right? And he was uh, there. Denver. Uh-huh. Uh, he's been around a long time. Remember, he got here with Dan Reeves because he was a son-in-law. That's a good name. I didn't realize he, was, <clears throat> he wasn't in the NFL this year, to be honest Joe, with you. Yeah, Joe, Joe found himself out of the NFL and was looking to continue his special teams coaching career and wound up taking a job with the University of Texas. So I only mention his name because of his connection to the Giants from years past. Highly respected. Been around this league for decades. And at the moment, not under contract to an NFL team. That's the only reason that I'm putting. I'm, I'm going to mention his name. Mike Adams, who was the assistant special teams coach here this past season. Former NFL safety. Everybody knows. He's, he's a Passaic County guy. He's a local homegrown North Jersey guy who, you know, over the course of his career as a safety, wound up actually making a Pro Bowl a couple of times with the Colts. Good player. And and was a self-made blue-collar player who always overachieved, if you're to believe what people thought about him as a safety. So that's the kind of guy who can inspire a special teams room because a lot of those guys need that extra push to be able to really excel at that job. It's a thankless job, John. We both know that. Mm -hmm. So Mike's been here for a year now under Coach McGahee. I would think that he would certainly be interested in somebody that is already under contract that I think they they would want to talk to. Um, But that's about as far as I'm going to go right now because 
uh, truthfully, if I threw out a few other names, I think Izzo still has a contract right now in the NFL. See, I didn't even know that. And that and that's why I don't want to throw out these I names. think he's under right. contract mm-hmm. to the Seattle Seahawks. Perfect. So there which, we go. Which to me means I'm not naming anybody no, who has an NFL contract. Not, that That's a great point. So a great point. You know, because uh, I, I got a couple other names I wouldn't mind seeing interviewed, but they have contracts. Yeah. So I'm not going there. Correct. Done. 201-939-4513. Let's go to James in Georgia. He's up next. Hi, James. Hey, guys. What's going on? What's up? Nothing much. Uh, first, um, um, you know, the first caller, he hit it right on the head. Y'all do, you got to do a great job. Uh, I do have a, a gripe today. I've uh, been waiting a week to call on it, unfortunately. What's up? Yeah. Uh, Last week, you uh, Wilson had ended up calling behind me, or like the day after, and he commented on uh, something I said about the quarterbacks, um, you know, picking a quarterback or whatnot, right? Okay. You said, and you said, John, you said, yeah, I don't um, quarterback statistics. I don't believe in them either. No, so no, 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 James, James, again, I didn't hear your call. Uh, the way Wilson, yeah, the way Wilson described your call is that somebody was saying you should keep no. Daniel Jones because of what his stats were at Duke. And I said, I could not care less what Daniel Jones stats were at Duke. That's irrelevant to me. That, that was the comment I was making. And that's how Wilson framed it for me. So please clarify. Uh, so that I know exactly what was said. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty <laughs> wild statement to make for right, anybody. Right. Well, what I, what I said was, and what I said before was that the quarterbacks coming out now have better college numbers than Daniel Jones did when he was in college. So statistically speaking, when you're picking somebody, you can you know have a legitimate reason since we have earned this number six pick as to picking a quarterback who's had a better college career than what Jones Ooh, had. I would, I would push back on that. I, w- I would say, as John said a moment ago, college stats are not really relevant here. If you're using that as the basis to say this player is going to be of this caliber in the NFL and that's one of the reasons I'm picking him, I think you're making a very sad mistake. It, it, James, it's, it's much... I, I don't... Only, I don't... It's much more about yeah. traits. It's much more about context of System. where the player was. A Remember, lot. when Daniel Jones was at Duke, do you know how many players he had on his offense that had a chance to make it to the NFL? Zero. I mean, he just didn't have talent right. around him, so his numbers are going to be deflated compared to somebody else. Depending on how, like, look at J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy's probably going to get picked by, before a bunch of guys this year that have much better statistics than him because he played in a system in Michigan where they didn't throw the ball a lot, where other guys are throwing it, dropping back 50, 60 times per game. So stats, especially in college, based on how divergent systems can be, can be very misleading. It depends on the player, the traits, what they're asking him to do. That stuff is all more important than any of the raw numbers. That are you know, there. if we were to base things on what you just said, that Andre Ware, who had all universe stats when he was in the NCAA level, Andre Ware would have been the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL. Because his, his college numbers were literally pinballing off the charts. It just doesn't work that way. See, I, I see what uh, the everything that gets charted is a statistic. You can't, you can't, there are other things you can look at, but those things end up being charted and then compared to other players as, and become a statistic. So really... Statistics are all we have to go on That's when you're – when. I mean, because if you're saying, well, then I like a guy because he's – because of uh, his height, strength, or where he went to school at, like, and how he produced in, say, the SEC versus another uh, conference, then you're talking about his wins and losses, and wins and losses are also – a statistic. I don't care about it. Hey, James, James, how many times have you listened to the show and I've railed about quarterback win loss record and how it's meaningless? It's uh, plenty of times, but now you, but that's what I'm asking you. What okay. are you, what are you saying you're basing it on? James. Stuff of, like, no, look, trade, James, James, no, James, but, I'll, 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 hold on. Right, go ahead, go no, ahead. James, I'll, I'll tell you. This, this is when I, when I evaluate players, here's, here's what I do. First of all, I watch them play. That's the first thing you have to do. You can look at the stats after the game. I, I'll go through some of these games. And I'll see a quarterback had a great game. I, I tune in. I watch the game tape, and I'm like, 
All right, yeah, his numbers are great, but he threw a, a three five-yard passes, and the wide receiver turned him into forty or fifty-yard gains. Like that's not a good that's not a good grade on the quarterback. The quarterback made a simple throw. There are other games where a quarterback puts the ball in these tight spots down the field. Wide receivers drop the football, right? So you right. have to watch the games and see how the quarterback plays, what what kind of throws he's making, and what they're asking him to do compared to what he's going to be asked to do in the NFL. So that's the first thing you do. And let, let me go. Production matters. Yeah. Look, I, when we talk about J.J. McCarthy, for example, this year, I'm going to make the point many times, he wasn't asked to carry a team. You know, he, he, he was, you know, the old tractor versus the trailer, you know, well, argument. Like he, Tom Brady was not when he was at Michigan. He was a trailer, right? So he hasn't shown me, and, and, and that's production-based in a lot of ways. So production does matter because you want to see the guy prove that he can be that type of productive right. player in college. So that's important, too. But traits right. are also very important. I think, you know, size, height, weight does matter for quarterbacks. I, like, for example, you look at Russell Wilson. He never learned how to throw over the middle of the field. That's just something he never ended up doing well in the NFL in a timing-based system because he had trouble navigating the middle of the field with his height. There are other quarterbacks that have that issue, too. Some shorter ones don't. Some are able to overcome that, like Drew Brees, who was a master at throwing over the middle because he was really good at that. So it all depends on the player, but it's traits, it's production, and it's tape study. Those are the three things that go into consideration when you're evaluating a college quarterback. I will uh, right, right, I'll right. make this really simple. I don't, I don't even want to get too, too deep into the woods here. I'm going to make it real simple. If it was as easy as just looking at a college quarterback stats, there would be no scouting staffs on NFL teams. They would simply say, okay, let's pull up the ESPN stats on everybody and then grade guys based on their stat sheet. They, there would never be a, a reason for a scout to go to a game or to go to a workout or to go to a pro day, or a combine, or a practice. There would never be a reason to do that if the stat line is all that mattered. Do you, do you understand? I mean, what you're saying yeah, I, is I just so wild. Uh, see, and now I, I feel like i I, I got to explain more of my first point based on how, you know, but production does matter, and uh, I think when I'm saying, like, Statistically speaking, you can take all that stuff into and put them all into categories when you compare them to other guys. And like, I and what, uh, the other thing was said, like, um, then one of the SEC quarterbacks, like uh, Georgia, one out from Georgia, would always be touted highly. And I said, you know, I never said anything about Sense and Bennett being you know a top pick or I wanted him on team because again he never was asked to throw the ball downfield but he got he won two national championships you know what I mean so I do I know where you have to look at the entire picture when it comes to picking a quarterback but when you have guys not but but when you have guys that have a the numbers and the production from where they went to school at based on you know in comparison to the quarterback you have now, you the only thing you have to go on is what you can see, you know what I'm saying? And there's a couple of guys who have had better careers than what Jones had. No, look, when he look, was there. no look, 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 look. That's and, all I'm no, saying. No, no, no. And, and and look, and and I get what you're saying. If you want to argue that there are guys in this draft that are going to be higher graded players than Daniel Jones right. when he came right. out? Sure, that's fine. Yeah, yeah but, that, but that has nothing to do with their statistics. <laughs> I mean... When you grade... Uh, Here, here's what... Here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm no, gonna to give you James, one crumb that you we, want. We understand your point. I, I, I think you're just verbalizing your point incorrectly. It's, Could be. It, it, okay. it, it, it isn't about right. their, their, right. their, their statistical output. It's about their complete play, complete picture as right. a player, right? And and if that's right. your point, sure. Now, will one of those guys yeah, be yeah. available when the Giants pick? I don't know. Will the Giants' overall grade compare to where they think Daniel Jones is now? Because remember, what Daniel Jones when what what he was when he came out is almost irrelevant at this point, right? Mm -hmm. You're grading the player as to what he's developed into now. So right. you're comparing to what you have in Daniel Jones now the, versus what you the, think one of the oh, players uh, you could draft this year can become in the final product. 
that's the comparison that you're yeah. making, right? You're not comparing what Jones was five years ago versus what Jaden Daniels is today. You're saying, well, what is Daniel mm -hmm. Jones in two years versus what is Jaden Daniels in two years, for example. That's the calculation yeah. that the front office See, is going to be See, the trickiest listen, part listen, for every listen, scout is to history. find out Yeah, that how, too, of course. The trickiest part that's for every part scout, it. and it's, it's why none of us can profess to be real scouts because guys who do this for a living and are not professionals and get paid to do it 24-7, those guys are the real guys, okay? None yeah, of us are. Point. None of us are. To that point, even the professional scouts who've been doing this for decades will tell you the trickiest part of their job is how do you translate a player's college tape and how does that now develop into the pro career that he's going to have? That translation, that conversion, that development, not only is the trickiest thing for every scout to identify, and none of them would bet their mortgage on any individual player because it's that hard to do. It especially, is that difficult. Especially with quarterbacks. Okay. But on top of that, then you've got the other intangibles that you have to throw on top of it, which can totally send a player awry, and that would be when he gets to the pros – does he have a personality issue? Does he turn out to be immature? Does he not want to learn and work hard? Does, does he not get the proper coaching to develop him like he is supposed to? And then all of a sudden, three years later, the guy turns into a bust. And it could have been for a variety of reasons. And if he wound up in a different place, maybe he wouldn't have been a bust. It can happen. Yeah, yeah correct. correct. All right, James. I, you got I, one more thing for I us? I appreciate y'all taking time. When, like I said, the first call, sure. this is it's a giant family and – uh, one little quick story. My little brother, he used to call a lot Zeke from Virginia. Uh, my dad named him Zeke after Zeke Moat, you know, and when um, <laughs> that's great. Well, when uh, Wilson called again, you know, he robbed me up a little bit, but, you know, he was coming at me saying I was I was sound like a young guy, this and that. I mean, I'm only 37, about to 38, but I was born in 86, so. My dad told me my first words were touchdown, you know what I mean? There you I'm go. On January 16th, I was two weeks old at the first Super Bowl. My dad always tells everybody, you know, my first words were touchdown. So, like everybody who calls, we love y'all guys. We love the Giants. We're Giants for life. we got the cats on us and everything. Next season, let's see what happens. Uh, and one more question is, when they say um, aggressively taking what the defense gives you, what does that actually mean when – Taking what the defense, you know, just taking what the defense gives you can, you know, lead you to some problems in itself. And I'll let y'all, I'll let it go on that one, guys. Hi, right, James. Appreciate the call. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure where that – I don't know if I've ever heard that expression, aggressively taking what the defense gives you, but uh, no, I, 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 I will try to uh, translate. Look, you can't – the defense in some ways will dictate to you what you can do, right? Like, if a team's going to play really soft coverage, it's going to be hard to get the ball down the field. It's just the way it goes. Eli Manning talked about this all the time, right? Mm -hmm. If a team is going to play light boxes, you're going to have to run the ball. The whole point is to create your offense so you have answers for what the defense is going to give you. This is not the 90s Cowboys anymore where they just line up and run the same plays every week against the same opponent no matter what. <laughs> lead draw, lead draw, play action, slant to Michael Irvin, deep shot to Alvin Harper. <laughs> <laughs> lead draw, lead draw, lead draw. Like you can't do that in the league anymore. It doesn't work that no. way. That 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 that's no longer an effective strategy, right? So what you need to do is look at what the defense is going to give you each week from a from a perspective. And I think, for example, the Eagles, I think, did a really poor job of this on Sunday. To, to give you an example, mm -hmm. they kept running these play action deep downfield concepts, and the Giants kept blitzing. Well, guess what? You're never going to be able to run those deep concepts. If Wink Barndale is no. bringing six or seven guys, Jalen Hurts is scrambling. No one's even out of their routes yet. He's facing pressure, and all of a sudden you can't throw the ball. So you have to figure out what the defense is doing and then adjust your game plan. You don't go away from what you're good at, but you have certain plays in different holsters. All right, if I see man-to-man -man defense, here are my man beaters. If I see cover three, here are my cover three beaters. If I'm going to get cover two, here are my cover two beaters, right? These are my blitz beaters, right? I have hot, route, hot, route, hot routes kind of into these. And some plays have different sides of the field will beat different coverages based on what how the play is designed. So that's what you mean by kind of taking what the defense gives you. you. You have to adjust to what the defense shows, and that's how you win football games. In short, every coordinator knows that he's got to rob Peter to play to pay Paul 
when, when he's calling a game. There are plays that he knows if the other team calls X, Y, or Z against this defense, we're burned. They know that. There's always going to be that possibility. But the idea is you're playing the percentages. You think that they're going to do this, that, or the other thing, yep. and you're going to scheme what you think will stop that. But you know. You know, and I'll give you a great example. I'll give you one play, and you'll remember the play. I'll give you one play, which is a perfect example of this. Giants are in New Orleans about a month ago. And uh, Cordell Flott is in the left slot of the defense. And the tight end, I believe Jordan was his name for the Saints. Mm-hmm. Was, was, was that the guy who caught the touchdown pass? I don't I have to look. Okay, remember. so he's on the right side of the line. It wasn't Jimmy Graham that caught the no, touchdown pass? No, it wasn't Graham. Right it was Jordan. Mm-hmm. There was a guy named Jordan. Anyway, or Johnson. He was a backup tight end. Anyway, the Giants called the defense that they believed was going to take care of the tendency of what the Saints were going to do. On the play, they got man on the outside, and Flat is playing the inside slot, and he's playing a zone because they thought that the tight end was going to run a flat route. Under no circumstances in that situation did they expect the Saints to run the tight end deep down the right seam. They ran the out and up on that so one. So what right? happened? Mm-hmm. So what happened? So flat plays, he's sitting on the, the on the short route. They think they got the right defense called for the right situation based on the formation the Saints looked uh, showed them and what their tendency was. There's no way, there's no way if that tight end decides he's going to wind up running a right seam that the Giants can stop it because there's no one that's going to cover him. Flott's sitting on the short zone. And Dory Jackson was occupied with the wide he's receiver the down corner. the sideline. That's correct. Okay, mm-hmm. so what happens? I know the player talking about that. Carr, I remember that play. Carr, and this is where it comes into play. You talk all the time. You always say, and John's so right about this, sometimes it matters the quarterback you're playing against. A lesser quarterback during the Giants' three-game winning streak maybe doesn't see that hole in the defense. Right. But Derek Carr does. So what happens? The tight end comes out off the line. He does a quick stutter, and then he takes off down the right seam. Flott lets him go because he's playing zone. And now there's nobody but the boogeyman to defend him. And the boogeyman didn't have a Giants helmet on that day, apparently. He's got no chance in the world to stop in that play. Boogeyman. Okay, the boogeyman has no chance. Boogeyman. And so, so Derek Carr boogeyman. sees it, and of course the tight end runs it, and it's a touchdown. And you know why? Because it's the perfect play that found the hole in the defense. Yes, I'm with you. That, uh, that's the best way I can describe it to you. No, I, I think that's fair. And I'll throw out another big picture thing that's un-Giant, non-Giants related. If you go back like God, three years ago, I guess it is now, Remember about mid-year, the Kansas City Chiefs started having a lot of troubles offensively, and they okay. couldn't figure things out. Yeah. Because teams, this is when Tyreek Hill was still there, which is why it was three years ago, mm-hmm. teams started to play so soft that even Tyreek Hill couldn't make big plays down the field anymore. So the Chiefs had to adjust what they do midseason, and they ended up going to a very short passing game. And you looked at Patrick Mahomes' average depth of target after those changes got made, it went way down. Because teams were dictating, all right, well, Kansas City, we're not going to let you continue to beat us with these monster plays down the field. We're going to make you methodically move the ball down the field. And what the good teams did, and the Chiefs did, they ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. They said, okay, Travis Kelsey, eight. Travis Kelsey, nine. (laughs) That's it. You know, Tyreek Hill runs a comeback, 12. And they they would just, you know, Clyde Edwards hair out of the backfield, seven. And they just dink and dunk and boop, 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 boop. And they moved the ball down the field differently. Because you have to adjust to what the defense does. So right. I think that's another good example. Go okay. subscribe to the Giants Little Podcast, everybody. <laughs> it's on all your favorite podcast platforms. That podcast is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. Podcast platforms, Giants.com slash podcast, Giants app. We're going to have at least two episodes a week. Uh, I just did one with Sean O'Hara, who actually went into pretty good detail about from an offensive lineman perspective, what you're looking for out of an offensive line coach and what helps players the most. He did the same thing with the special teams coach and also the strength and conditioning coach, which is another deal yeah. where the Giants have to make a replacement. Coach Henderson went to Florida. Coach Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yes, yeah. went to Florida. Henderson is correct. still here. As He's still here. Coach. <laughs> Don't correct. want to make that mistake. Correct. Um, so he talked a lot about that, and I thought it was a real good conversation for Sean about the offensive line, too, and what needs to happen there. As you head into 2023. So 2024. Wow. Um, Make sure you go check that out on the Giants Huddle 
podcast. And again, for all of our podcasts, if you're an Apple podcast, leave that five-star positive review. It really helps us out. 201-939-4513. Uh, Mike is on Long Island. He's up next. What's up, Mike? Hi, how are you guys doing? We're great. Um, listen, I just wanted to thank you. I mean, uh, I don't call very often, but I listen all the time. Well, thank okay? you for that. And uh, your draft stuff is just unbelievable. Okay. Uh, if I don't listen to you live, I listen to the podcast and I fall asleep to it. So you're the last thing I hear during the day. Well, Mike, <laughs> let me tell you, you're the first person that Paul Dottino puts to sleep. <laughs> Usually his energy is so electric, he unfortunately keeps people up. <laughs> Unless you're listening to a lot of the Lance and Howard shows, then I understand you passing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, listen, in all sincerity, I really do love, love uh, your show, and I, and, you. and I love all the people on it. Uh, so listen, this one is for Paul. I really have three questions. Okay, so if you give me a little bit of time, I'd like to ask all three of them. Get one, them. Uh, I'm an old timer now. Uh, I'm, I'm 72, and I'm still pissed off about trading Fran Tarkenton. Okay, we trade Fran Tarkenton for Norm Sneed yeah. and a wide receiver. You have you, a, you have hit a bit of a source. Oh no 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 Paul, I'm no 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 no. Hold on. The package deal also included a pick that was later used to get Brad Van Pelt. So okay. don't be so disappointed because Brad Van Pelt was a five-time Pro Bowl linebacker. Well, there was also some off-the-field stuff with Tarkenton. Too. Well, that yes, was, there was. was an issue, yes, so. there was. But we won't, we won't go there. Simply put, oh, okay. though, that the take, the take was Norm Sneed, who be, was a Pro Bowl quarterback in 1972 for one year and then got very old, and, and that, that was the end of him. Uh, and, and Brad Van Pelt was one of the draft picks they got in that deal. So just, you know, it wasn't as lopsided as you think. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we did get the draft pick, you know, and I didn't realize that, but it could have been a terrible draft pick. So I guess we were lucky with the draft pick. Well, I mean, it, that's part of what happens when you take a draft pick in a deal. Right. You're having confidence that you're going to make something out of it. Question number two, Mike. Go ahead. Okay. And by the Question way, Bob, Bob, Bob Grimm won't like you just saying another wide receiver. I know him and his parents are going to be very upset that you've now disrespected him. Yeah. Go ahead. You know what? Uh, all of a sudden, I couldn't remember his name. But Go whatever. ahead. Okay, next question is uh, quarterback. Now, yes. don't get me wrong. I love Daniel Jones. He's, the per he's perfect for New York. You couldn't get anybody better than him other than, uh, pay, uh, than uh, Manning, okay? But uh, – we got to start thinking maybe in the future a little bit. And I got to tell you, I've been watching college football. I'm not a big college football fan, but I've been watching it this year a lot. I have to say, I like Michael Penix. Okay? I, that guy can throw a dime. What's your thoughts on him? Mike, here's what I would suggest you do. Um, go check out Draft Season. It's our draft podcast. And I do listen to it all yes, the time. I'm not sure if today's episode is up yet, Pierce, and his draft season up yet. All right, it, it's, it's going to post in a couple hours, and we literally, I think we do 10 minutes almost the top of the show just on Penix. So I, really? So I will give you a, a, a brief version of that to, You that still right got now. Pauline with you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Tony's awesome. So yeah. we, do, we do a long back and forth on Penix, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version now very quickly. Really good arm, can make big plays down the field, not a great athlete, isn't a great runner, not great throwing off platform, and especially when he's not able to hang back there and throw in a clean pocket. And Washington's offensive line was really good this year, so he was able to do that for much of the year. But we saw Michigan get some pressure on him in that college football playoff. It messed right. him up a little bit. And his yep. ball placement sometimes can be a little wonky and inconsistent. I wonder if that's something that has to do with his throwing motion, which is not the most fundamentally sound-looking thing in the world. I agree. So yeah, he's, he's not he as like – He's not as consistently efficient and accurate down to down as you might like, but he is a guy that will get you some big time chunk plays down the field, no doubt about it. And you must right. also consider his medicals. Yes, tons of which medicals. Which are serious, two, serious concerns. Two ACLs and a shoulder injury. He had four yeah. season ending injuries in Indiana. So that is a big deal. Paul's 100% right. I mean, that that's baggage that quite frankly for me would push me away from him. I'm sorry, but yeah. that's just a problem for me. And and I and, and, and he, a lot of people are saying, by the way, and I'm, I apologize for interrupting. A lot of people are saying, you know, oh, top fifteen pick, I'd be pretty surprised yeah. if he was a first round selection. That's a I, that's I, a risky move. John, I think I think he is he it. is a day two pick. And would it shock me if he was a third round pick? That wouldn't 
shock me given the medical issues. Yeah. Uh, do you think he throws sidearm a bit? He doesn't throw over the top, I noticed. Yeah, his, his, you know what? And his, his elbow does drop sometimes mm-hmm. on some of these throws, and I think maybe that has something to do with some of his ball placement issues from time to time. Okay. Just uh, one other thing, and it's more of a comment than a uh, question. Uh, you know, this stuff with uh, the head coach and the defensive coordinator, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just uncomfortable the way the setup took place on Monday. The way, you know, the way they had an 8.30 meeting, and then later on in the day they, you know, they let, you know, the, uh, the assistants go. And, you know, they kind of set the poor guy up. You know what I mean? And, you, you know, I don't mind having a tough head coach, but if he's going to alienate everybody, then, you know, that's not a good thing, you know? And uh, to be honest with you, I, you know, I kind of like the defensive coordinator more than the head coach. Yeah, I just do. I just like the way he, he uh, conducts himself on the field. Uh, he's, he's a little toned down a little more. Uh, I remember the um, the time when uh, when uh, the quarterback Jones made a mistake and he threw the clipboard at him or the computer at him. Uh, not not that he threw it, but he kind of flung it a little bit. He tossed it at Shea Tierney, the quarterback's coach. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> he, he, he did like a little flick. Yeah, yeah don't, you know, don't read too it. much into that, please. Don't. Yeah, you know. So I, I, you know, I'm just a little disappointed at how all this took place. You know, it, it, it's just disappointing to me. All I right. just want you to know I that. I got you. No, appreciate the call. Thanks appreciate, for your appreciate interest. Appreciate your opinion. But I, I, I will say it's not everybody. It's not everybody. He said he said alienates everybody. It's not everybody. Yeah, that, that would not be an accurate statement. That it, it's not everybody. You can just do the counting on, on, on the people. In mm-hmm. fact, it's, it's the minority of the defensive staff as a whole. You know, so... <sighs> I appreciate the thought, yes. and you're certainly entitled to have an opinion, and that's what being a fan's all about. Yeah, 100%. Um, 201-939-4513. And, again, hopefully there'll be some resolution. We'll be able to dig a little bit deeper into this over the next week or so. Uh, let's go to uh, John in New Jersey. He's up next. Hey, John, what's up? Hi. John, go once. All right, put him on hold, Pearson. Let's see if we can get John back up. In the meantime, let's go to Jay in Florida. Hi, Jay. Hey guys, how you doing today? We're great. What's going on? Uh, nothing much. I first off just wanted to uh, give Paul a big thank you. He got me uh, in touch with the um, I think it's called the Big Blue VCR guys on Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I got your note. I'm yep. glad you were able to do that. Yeah. Wow, we found someone that Paul didn't block. Congratulations. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty nice guy, so nobody blocks me. <laughs> there you go. But uh, you know, I love you guys' stuff. I've, I've been listening to you guys since 2013. Unfortunately, I'm uh, takes a lot of courage to make up these calls every once in a while, so I finally get the you know what to do it and you know just go with it. Yeah, what do you got, Jay? It's so all good, man. Honest. It's all got, good. Man? Relax, have some fun. <laughs> so my my um my big concern, uh, not really concern. I'm a big Daniel Jones fan, um, and there are a lot of fans that are saying that um, you know, with the six overall pick, uh, no matter what, we need a quarterback. You know, there's arguments, a lot of people saying, oh, well, Jones can't, you know, he doesn't have the talent to do this, doesn't have the talent to do that. And I do agree. We don't do need to, um, we need to uh, kind of shore up that quarterback room. But what, uh, what are you guys thoughts on what happens? I mean, there's so many things that can happen, I guess. I mean, Jones can not be back till midseason. He could be back by the, you know, the start of training camp. And, you know, I'm sure that's got to be a really, really big confusing this decision for the GM and everybody to make, you know, considering all those things. And I'll, I'll take you guys, um, take you guys offline and listen. No, appreciate the call, Jay. Look, it's 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 a tough situation. And Joe Shane reiterated that on Monday, where you're going to have to either re-sign Tyrod Taylor, which he said he's not ruling out, right, or bring another quarterback that you would trust to start Week One of next year. Now, is that a free agent? Maybe, but if it is, it's a guy you're going to have to invest in. Like, this is not going to be a, you know, million-dollar-a-year quarterback that you can no, just start with. and one. you have to find someone willing to come into that situation, which right. not who, everybody will do. Who knows at some point, 
and he they reiterated again when Daniel said that he's going to be the guy that you know you bring him in and then he's going to have to step aside when Daniel's ready. Correct. Right. That's a good point. Or do you draft somebody? But again, when you're talking about a guy that you're going to trust to start week one, you're probably not talking about a fourth round pick, a fifth round pick. You're probably not even mm-hmm. talking about a third round pick. To be totally mm-hmm. honest with you, so then you're looking at a high value draft pick being used on a quarterback. So yes, um, and when you make these decisions in March for free agency and April for the draft, how sure are you going to be about the pace of Daniel Jones's recovery? I don't know. You know, you can have, I'm not even going to say a setback, but things can speed up or slow down at any time during a rehab process. So yeah, it, it's, it's a tough situation to navigate. And I think Joe Shane will keep all options open and all options on the table, which is what you need to do when you're trying to figure out a position as important as quarterback. John, just looking at my watch, we're about seven weeks away from free agency. Okay. Okay. I would hope you have your you you have, you have a watch countdown to, to no. Free well, I'm just looking at the, <laughs> it's it's January 10th, right? I could totally see you having that on your watch. Though. Okay. Well, I, if I could, <laughs> <laughs> if I could, I have it on my calendar at home in my office. Your big big red circle. There you go. Oh, so, oh wait, do you actually know the date? No, right now I don't remember. It's okay. on my calendar, but I, I don't. You. I don't know what it is right I now. You had a memory offhand. Pearson, we get to. Uh, uh, we could screen one more. Go ahead. Oh, it, my my point to you is this: you hope you don't know this, but you hope that in the next seven weeks, your medical staff has more information. You do on Daniel's rehab, and again, there are no guarantees, but if their information gives them more confidence to give you a projection as to how he's progressing. It will impact your decision. I think that's that's only prudent to say. Now, for the Giants' sake, you'd like that to be as as confident and as definitive as possible. You may not have that luxury. You may wind up getting trainers and medical guys who say to you, you know what, we still don't have a beat on this. He's been rehabbing for, for almost three months, and we still don't have a lot of confidence to tell you when we think he's going to be ready. Right. That's the worst-case scenario. Right. And if that's what they tell Joe, now he's got to make decisions based on nothing, basically. Right. And I'm just, just – again, this is a theoretical world here. I'm just going to real quick go through the playoff teams here, okay? Bills, elite quarterback play. Miami Dolphins, elite quarterback play. Baltimore Ravens, elite quarterback play. Houston Texans. Fairly elite quarterback play with Stroud, Stroud was really good. Patrick Mahomes, elite quarterback play. Dak Prescott, elite quarterback play. Jalen Hurts, run-up MVP last year. Jared Goff's played really well this year. Yes. Jordan Love's played really well this year. It's Matthew Stafford's right. played really well this year. And then Pur- Purdy's a MVP candidate. So 11 of Is the— Is Joe Flacco elite? I skipped the Browns for a reason, Pearson. Thank you. Well, he, he was. I'll say what Joe, Joe Flacco was playing elite towards the end of the year. Well, that was the big question back I when he was at Baltimore. Yeah, remember? yeah. and he and he was. We a got plug-in. more Eli Joe Flacco elite questions on the show before you got here, Pearson, than you could ever possibly imagine. Trust me. Yeah, you know, hey, he was a plug-in guy and he got it done. No, he did. But, but to your point, but but you know what? But they're a team that survived with. They what started four different quarterbacks here this year. The Browns. Look at their defense. Right. <laughs> Correct. But again. 11 of the 14 playoff teams are getting high-end quarterback play. And I'm not talking like the 18th best quarterback in the league. I'm talking like top 12, 13 quarterbacks in the league. Of the top quarterbacks in the league that did not make the playoffs, Mm -hmm. you're looking at Justin Herbert. Right, for sure. Trevor Lawrence. Well, Burrow was hurt in Cincinnati. I can't count Burrow. No, you can't. The only two... Top 15 quarterbacks in the league that did not make the playoffs Mm -hmm. are Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert. Yeah. And Trevor Lawrence was one game away from making it. You know, it's it's hard sometimes, John, because we always say that this game has to be taken into context. So I I, I guess I I, I guess my bigger point, and then you can finish. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. If you have a chance to chase what you think is a guy that can be one of those elite guys. Oh, you need to do it. Can you pass on that? No, no. And, if and, if and you that, have all in belief, you got to, you got to do that. It. To me, is the overriding question that dominates everything. Because right. To your point, you don't know about Daniel Jones, right? You you can't predict what's going to happen with his injury status. You have an idea. You can hedge your bets, obviously, but exactly what's going to happen, you don't know. You're not going right. to know even at the end of April. Correct. So the question is, if there's a guy sitting there that you believe can be your Josh Allen, your you know whatever. 
then then what do you do? That's when things get interesting. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, you owe it to yourself if that if you're all in on a player and you just have 150 percent confidence that he is going to be a super duper star. You owe it to yourself to make the pick. That's really what you're saying. And that and Joe Shane and when he talked at the bye week. He was asked that. And he yes. said, look, yeah, if, if he's the best available player, that's the player we're going to pick. Right, because you're doing it injustice mm-hmm. if if you pick the guy and he's not somebody you're all in on, and vice versa. You also do yourself an injustice if you force it and, and, and go the other way. So the bottom line here is that, unfortunately— and I get your point, John, and I don't, I'm not going to disagree with your point about how the predominant number of playoff teams needed to have a higher-level quarterback. I will not dispute that. I would also say, though— The Browns, Steelers, and Bucks are the three teams, by the way, that I would consider not having that high right, quarterback. Right, right. I've never been a Mayfield mm-hmm. guy, so I won't fight you he on that. He has had a nice year, but— He's done okay. But I would not put him in that same category as the other guys. But, you know, and, and why did the other elite guys— not get in the handful of three guys that you mentioned. And what here's what happens. You, you know, your best quarterbacks always want to have a run game to help balance out when possible. Mm-hmm. And they love having a really good defense that can allow them to gamble some because they know the defense is going to have their backs so that they can play a little bit more free. And that and that's the trade-off, right? And that's the trade-off. There's always context. Whether it's using the if you don't use the high pick on a quarterback, you could pick a dominant defensive player. You could pick a dominant wide receiver. Or if you don't pay the quarterback, you can pay three other really good players if you don't pay in a quarterback a lot of I mean, So those are the decisions that you have to and, make. And I know it goes back a long time. And, and that's why, you know, there is many ways to skin a cat, right? We always say there, there's mm-hmm. many ways to skin a cat. The, ninth, the 2000 Baltimore Ravens to beat the Giants in Super Bowl 35. And I'm not, like, going way, way back here. But the point is, that's, people is well, well, people talked about that Ravens right. defense as being one of the greatest of all time defenses, right. right? What did they have? They had Lewis in the backfield run for 2,000 yards that year. Yeah. They had a phenomenal defense, and they had Trent Dilfer as their quarterback. Right. And look what happened. They rolled and won the Super Bowl championship because the other two components, the run game and the defense, were such a high level right. that they could afford to have just an okay guy at quarterback. How many other Super Bowls did that team make? And, and well, that's, that's it. The problem. It's hard to sustain. Well, that. that's it. Right. It is. So in, in some ways, that's almost like catching lightning in a bottle. No, it's exactly what it is. No, 100% you're right. You know what I Absolutely, mean? Absolutely, for sure. So, so the problem is you don't always have the opportunity – to grab one of those top, 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 top Brady-like quarterbacks. Which elevates everything else around them. Right. Those guys are few and far between. I've had people, I've had some people say, uh, call, call me and friends of mine and stuff and say like, well, if you don't get one of the top four or five quarterbacks in the league, then why are you even playing the game? Because you can't make the Super Bowl if you don't have one of the top four or five quarterbacks. And I understand the argument. And and, and I'm like, well, then you, you have know to what? play though. You, you gotta to play. play. You gotta play, you have to play. Right? You're in the league. You're not gonna quit the league. So you know what you do? You you make sure you can be balanced and have a run game right. and have a real good defense. Well, and, and well, and, and that was and that was the thing last year, right? And that was the argument. Yeah, you have to bring Daniel back because you're not gonna be in a position to get one of those elite guys. Right. That's the point. Like you're picking more than what they pick last year, nineteenth or whatever well, it was. So and at that's six, just the way it is. depending upon how you you grade these quarterbacks. You might not have one there either. You might not. No, 100%. Absolutely. All right, 201-939-4513. Let's go to John in New Jersey. John, you're up next, which is why, like I said, all options open, and they could go. And if Daniel's exactly. a starter week one, great. Is there, he, he could be the best possible option. He might be. He could very well, very, very well be possible. Yep. Go ahead, John. Hi, how are you? We're great. Hi. Hi. Uh, no, I just want to say a uh, first-time caller. I am a huge fan of you guys. Welcome aboard, my uh, man. Paulie D. Thank you. Yeah, Paulie D. I see you every time at training camp. I'm always shouting your name out. Um, so, yeah, I know you guys are talking a lot about the quarterbacks. Um, that is not really my take on this. I'm more about the uh, special guys that are out there. Yeah, um, go ahead. What do you we got? Already had, we already have Daniel Jones. I figure let's you know, see what he can give us. Um, I'm more concerned about the tight end. I'm a huge Brock Bowers fan. Um, so are a lot of people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's I really I good. I, I know. I mean, I hope we can get him. You're I think that would one. be such a – yeah. I feel like that would be such a key role for us. Um, I also like Neighbors from LSU. Yeah, he's he's mm-hmm. great, too. I, 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 mm-hmm. I, I, I think that would be a great pick for us. 
Um, we do obviously you, need guards. Do you like Adunzie out of Washington? Say that again? Do you like Adunzie, the big wide receiver out of Washington? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any big guy, let me get him. Because I feel like we need guys that <laughs> you know, can jump up. You that, know how I feel anything. about skyscraping <laughs> targets in the passing game. I don't think we need yeah. to have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and they got to start in the trenches. I mean, I would take a corner in the late rounds. I'm fine with that. But I definitely think we need to start with that line. Definitely start with that line and get an explosive receiver. Give something for Daniel Jones to work with. You know, because uh, I, I do have faith in Daniel Jones. I, I, he can run. He takes shots. He does whatever he can. You know, and we just got to give him some help. And uh, I, I'll just leave it up to you guys. I'm just excited to call. Thank, Thank you, you for John. taking my call. And I listen to you guys every day on my lunch all day. Oh, well, we are, I appreciate That's that, John. Kind. We get a lot of calls today, new names. I like it. Yeah. I like We kind of have like our in-season call group and then our off-season call group. And frankly, I think our off-season call group is actually bigger. I think yeah. people get so excited to talk draft with us and for agency and stuff. I think – and, guys, we love all of you, obviously. But we, I love different names and different people. You guys – do a fantastic job. We thank you for listening. Can I just add an asterisk to our quarterback conversation? Sure. Because I haven't. I don't know if we've actually had this this talk on the show. I before. would like to add something else too, but you go ahead first. Okay. Yes. Just because you draft a quarterback, if you decide to take one in the first round, whether it's six or at a different spot, you can trade back, you move, trade up, whatever. If you Come move, mm-hmm. I, you guys know how I feel. I'm not one who likes to throw the rookie quarterback in there right away. I'm all for sitting him for a year or two. Oh, I think if Daniel's healthy year one, I still think he starts. So do I. So I just want to make that clear to folks mm-hmm. out there. We, I think John and I both agree, if, if this front office believes that there is an absolutely can't-miss quarterback that it comes up on their board as the top guy at the time of their slot, and they're all in on this guy as being a franchise kind of guy, you got to take him. But that doesn't mean that he plays in year one or even year two. It may right. be he may wind up being, uh, do I dare say it, Aaron Rodgers sitting behind Brett Favre. Yeah. That or, could happen. Or Mahomes sitting behind Alex Smith. Bingo. Right. No, Jordan Love sitting behind Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Go down the list. So let, let's just, I just don't want somebody now all or of a Jalen, sudden. Or Jalen Hurts, who, who, who did he sit behind? Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia for the first time that year. When? Was it Wentz? I guess it was Wentz, right? Yeah, it had so, to have been. So I don't want someone hitting me up on Twitter all of a sudden saying, oh, you think they should go draft a quarterback if they really love him, and that's the end of Daniel Jones. No, I don't personally believe that. I think you can draft a quarterback very high, and he can sit for a couple of yeah. years. And I want to point this out, too. Like, didn't you proved that you could have a good offense with Daniel Jones. The Giants were about Correct. The 10th in offensive EPA, expected points added two years ago, the year they made the playoffs. They were a top 10 offensive team according to EPA, and that's one of the most accurate advanced metrics in terms of gauging offense that year. So you can build, and that's, again, without a great offensive line, not without great wide receivers. So you can build a yeah. good offense around Daniel Jones. You can do it. We have seen it happen here with this coaching staff. Correct. Now, the schedule that year, we get all that. The opponents weren't the toughest. All those caveats, totally agree. But, you know, they have, like, DVOA. They have weighted DVOA that takes opponents into consideration. The Giants were still top half the league that year. So mm-hmm. you can build a good offense around him if you do the right thing. So there are different avenues here, and all of them make sense. This is not us saying, you know, pull the parachute and get out on that. But, again, Correct. you just have to look at all the potential options. And, and, all right, and so we're both clear on that one. Do. Thank yeah, you. Just wanted to make sure we got that out there. Marcus in Arizona, another new name. Marcus, what's going on, man? Hmm. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? We're great. Well, I don't get to call during the season because, like I told Paul and Russ before, I like to ride the emotional roller coaster. <laughs> so I don't like to call in and complain. So here's my um, couple things I'd like to see this off season. Um John, you said it the other day um, about going all in on the offensive line and being okay with the uh, defense taking a small step. Well, n- well, not just not offensive line, Marcus. I said offense in general, and and that includes think, weapons outside. So it's offensive line I and know, weapons. But I think our offense, our weapons will be better with a better offensive line. I mean, Jalen Hyatt and Darius Slayton are wide open. A lot of the time. Marcus, I still want so, a 1A guy. I want that receiver, that other teams, that like the same way when the Giants play the Cowboys and they have to worry about CeeDee Lamb and Terry McLaurin and, and A.J. Brown. I want that guy that other teams have to do I, that for when they N- face the Nakua Giants. was That's a fifth-round draft want. choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you can also argue he's, he's the number two guy on that team. I know. I, know. I want that guy, too. I hope Neighbors is available. 
If not, I mean, I don't know if I have the patience for another rookie offensive lineman to wait three years to develop, which goes to my second point. You want to buy one find... is what you want to do, right? <laughs> not, see, I don't think we have the cap space for that either. Um, you might I have for one that... big splash. At you guard, might. you can. At guard, yeah. you can. Absolutely. You might, you might have it. At, at guard, yes. But I also think that we need to find the best offensive line coach in the NFL, offer him more money than he's ever seen, <laughs> and a promotion. Promotion, make him assistant head coach. It does not matter. Okay. Do whatever you got to do. Dante Sarnecchia is retired. He, he's not coming out of retirement. And my other choice in that regard would be Mike Munchak. And he is also retired. So whoever scratch whoever those two guys retired. off the list. <laughs> now, but look, look, I, I, I think not retired. I think the theme behind Marcus's point is is good. We know how important the offensive line coach yeah. is. You got to get it right. Use whatever resources you need to to get it right. No, no argument, Marcus. Mm-hmm. We agree. Yes, because we we saw what happened with the team across the pond. You could have the best quarterback in the NFL. You put him behind the second worst offensive line, he lasted five minutes running for his life. So you could draft Caleb, Drake, Daniels. It doesn't matter. If he's running for his life, we have the same result. So No, I get it. That's what I would like to see. I love Saquon. I want him back. Um, I hope we could keep McKinney. Not sure that we could keep them both. Um, would love to see it. I think that um, – one more year of building before you start going outside and make a run for the Super Bowl. And I do think that, you know, one big splash at guard would be good. Um, and I think that once you're a quarterback away, if it's 2024, I don't mind giving 10 first round draft picks away for a quarterback. I just don't think this is the year to draft a quarterback in the first round. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. Good stuff, man. Good call. Wow, he, he had a lot of pent-up uh, questions and comments after not calling all season. <laughs> Good one. No, I think we great set of calls today. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, wow. Very, very nice. Excellent we applaud job. you folks today. And, guys, just remind, we're here with you all year round. Big Blue Kickoff Live, presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the Giants. Much to Pearson's chagrin, five days a week in the offseason. We go every day for an hour, and we should the Giants Little podcast around two times a week, too. We might go to three when we get a little bit closer to the draft. We have some of these tentpole events like the Combine and Senior Bowl, things like that. But, you know, two to three times depending on around what you, where we're going to be and, 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 and what's going on. Thanks for being with us. I'm with Casillas tomorrow, Lance and Paul on Friday. Um, I will be not be here on Friday. Pearson will not be here on Friday, so hopefully Dom doesn't uh, – Forget to hit record. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 that you, the bus is just like the exhaust is just really thick right now. Do you want to back the bus back over him, Pearson, or, or are you good? You're okay? Okay. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Until then. You deserve to treat yourself, so turn your tax refund into a U-fund and give yourself a Straight Talk Wireless Extended Silver Unlimited plan and get a new Samsung Galaxy A14 on them. You can get a great everyday value on wireless with Straight Talk's unlimited plan starting at $25 a line per month for four lines. You'll save so much, you'll be enjoying that refund all year long. It's the refund that keeps on refunding. Find Straight Talk at straighttalk.com or at your local Walmart store. Taxes and fees not included. Offer valid through 41424 while supplies last. Online only. Must purchase a Straight Talk extended Silver Unlimited plan to qualify. Limit of five phones per customer. Family plan discount with four lines all on the Silver Unlimited plan. Not combinable with auto pay discount. Taste the Mediterranean through March 19th at Whole Foods Market. Save on animal welfare certified bone and beef short ribs, sustainable wild caught sockeye salmon, and more. Find sales on Parmigiano Reggiano, charcuterie and ground lamb. Grab an olive bull bread from the bakery. Plus, wines from the Mediterranean start at just $8.99. Taste the Mediterranean now at Whole Foods Market. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly.